All right, everybody, this is more ethics and practice in real estate. Must be important because they keep repeating it. Um, we've already done this in other videos, but this is due diligence and uh, unauthorized practice of law. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. This hopefully will be a pretty short video. Um, a house was built in 1917. You provide a lead-based paint disclosure when requested. And are these do's or don't? No, you don't do that. You give it to them anyway. Yes. Do you have uh, a house is listed on the market and the previous owner passed away? You disclose she had HIV. I mean, that's unnecessary. You don't need to do that. A seller disclosed her house is on the public sewer line, but you know other houses in the area are septic. You investigate the seller's claim. Yeah, I would investigate that. I mean, I think so. That's due diligence, right? So diligence responsibilities is an example. Are you practicing due diligence? All right, due diligence, lead-based paint, um, HIV. No, you don't need to disclose that. See, I didn't even read this thing. You receive a call from a buyer who's interested in one of your listings. What must you disclose? You must disclose your agency re uh, relationship. You must account for all monies you place that are placed in your trust. You must disclose any personal interest in, in a property to all parties. And no, always recommend buyers get an inspection. It's due diligence. Okay. It's uh, your responsibility to invest any discrepancies of the material nature. And it is due diligence to investigate any potential discrepancies of a, a material nature. All right, a buyer provided you earnest money. You account for all the monies placed it in your trust. Yes. You receive a call. You, dis you disclose your agency relationship. You ensure that all parties have a signed con copy of the transactional paperwork and retain these for the statutory period. An MLS listing says the property is much bigger than it appears. You investigate. And you can call the other agent out on it because it could have been a typo. You know, you don't need to be nasty to say, hey, uh, I don't think this is correct. Um, I would be advisable. Just an FYI to update it. I mean, you don't need to be nasty because they could have been, they could have been in a hurry and it could have been an accident. They don't need to go around suing people, putting in a complaint to the commission just because somebody made a mistake because we all need second chances in life. All right, let's see. Sheldon's property condition is confidential. Allison owes the confidentiality of their buyer relationship. What happened here? I guess we're going to have to read this whole thing, aren't we? Allison was the listing agent on Sheldon's property. Brenda put in an offer on the property contingent upon a home inspection, which found the gas furnish needed to be replaced as it is producing carbon monoxide. Brenda decided not to purchase the property. Um, Allison told Sheldon the furnace condition must be disclosed, disclosed to future buyers, and Sheldon disagreed and told Allison to lie about the condition. However, Allison stated she couldn't do that, and the term contract was terminated. Allison noticed that Sheldon's property was back on the market, and Allison contacted the new listing agent to find out if the furnace was installed, and it wasn't. And now Sheldon is upset that Alice is, Allison is inquiring about the condition of the property and broke confidentiality. What do you think? Okay, I think this is... She behaved ethically. Um, all right, you have earned the key of diligence. All right, awesome. We'll take that key. Take the key to be and finish this course, too. That'll be a good one, too. <laughs> Unauthorized practice of law. Part of due diligence and the duty of reasonable skill and care is licensees should offer advice on real estate topics, should not offer advice in which they have no expertise. And we've talked about a lot of this in a lot of these videos. For example, mortgage calculations. I mean, we're not, we're, if you want to become a mortgage officer, hey, that's great. 
If you love math, that would be a great idea. But sitting here calculating out closing costs and all that kind of stuff, we are not mortgage officers. We are not accountants. We are not going to sit and answer accounting questions. And I already explained in a lot of these videos why you do not want to do that. You don't want to do it for legal reasons, but you also don't want to um, give people the wrong advice. And, and then you'll end up losing them as future clients. And then you could risk losing referrals from them because they're going to get pissed off because you gave them wrong advice. So, I mean, there are just a lot of reasons why you just don't do it. Do's and don'ts. Use existing forms an attorney has reviewed. Yeah, I would do that. Create your own? No. Interpret legal consequences? No. Explain clauses to your clients? Oh, that one. I don't know about that one. Let's look at this. Let's see what it says. Does it say explain clauses? You know, are these legal clauses we're talking about? Okay, how can you best avoid even an unintentional authorized practice of law? Um, don't interpret contract provisions. Acceptable explanation. The clause in the contract describes what happens if each party breaches the contract. I mean, I guess you could do that. All right. Charge a fee for preparing transaction documents. Uh, if anybody wants to take a screenshot of these laws, this is national laws, by the way, not specific state. If it's specific state, I will put it in the title on the thumbnail. So you don't even have to bother watching it unless you're in that state. Just to save everybody time. Uh, know your state's definition of unpracticed a law. Do, don't and do. I don't think you should charge a fee uh, for preparing. Don't charge a fee for preparing documents. There you go. Right there. Um, freely make changes to existing forms. <laughs> Encourage cl clients to have an attorney draft non-standard forms. Um, I don't think so. Okay, there's our do's and don'ts for these. So it's saying you can do that. They say you can get an attorney to change the forms. I mean, I guess it depends on the situation. If it's a, an investment or commercial real estate property, for sure. The most um, single-family homes do not need a lawyer to be changing stuff, but you never know. I mean, there could be a lot involved. It could be a part of a trust. It could be deed issues from the past. I mean, something could be going on and they need to change some forms. Marcus is a real estate licensee who works with landlords and tenants. What should Marcus do to ensure he doesn't overstep the unauthorized practice of law? You should know and understand the rights, but you don't advise clients. Okay, so let's see. To protect his client, what action should Marcus have, have taken? Probably um, consult an attorney, but let's let's read it. First time home buyer, Franny signed a representation agreement with new licensee Mark. Marcus, the market was hot, and Franny wanted the seller to know he would beat any offer he received by $10,000. She asked Marcus to, to include this clause in the contract, so he wrote an additional provision on the standard contract form. The seller received three offers over the list price. He then accepted Franny's offer for $10,000 over the highest list price, which ended up being more than Franny could afford. To protect his client, what action should Marcus have taken? Um, advise Franny to consult with an attorney to draft the clause. See, I knew that before because we're talking about unauthorized practice of law. Review these scenarios and indicate which one is violating licensing law.
All right, so I think it's this one right here. We can read it real quick. Tamron is a listing agent for Anthony's 25 acres of land. Carter wanted to purchase the land and make a full price, but now Anthony thinks he might get more more for the property because the first offer came in at full price, so he asked Tamron to counter offer for a higher price, and Carter, upset that he countered his full price, mentions possibly contacting his lawyer to force the sale of this price. Tamron persuades Carter otherwise by telling him it would be a lengthy process, more money, and in his opinion, would not go in Carter's favor. But based on Tamron told him, Carter agrees to counter off when the sale is completed. I'm so confused. Carter files a complaint, and um, what do you think? Does Carter have a valid complaint against against him? I'm like confused on what they're even doing here. I mean, it just it's crazy. Both of these could be considered unpracticed law because um, Casey should have drafted a form that's clearly a violation, and Tamron should have advised her client to consult an attorney rather than offering her opinion about the ramifications. Okay. All right, when you begin your new career, remember to remember to practice within your expertise. And we've already said this more than once. You know, don't offer opinions, advice, calculations, accounting, anything like that. And if it's not your expertise, appraisals, no. Um, closing documents, don't sit there and try and calculate them out. Just send them to a lender. Whoever their lender is, send them to their lender. Because you want to keep your clients and you want to keep them, keep all their referrals too. You don't want to piss them off by giving them the wrong advice. And then you got the problem. Send them to an attorney. Send them to an appraisal. Send them to a home inspector. Send them to environmental specialists. All these people you're going to be working with. It's the best delegation in the world. Just send them somewhere else. <laughs> so you're not blamed for anything. When in doubt, some, send them somewhere else. Let somebody else be liable. All right, which of these actions is allowed and helps the licensee to avoid illegal? Probably this one right here. There's only six questions here, so we're only allowed them as two problems. Which of the following is representative of an agent's due diligent and ethical behavior? This one's one. Um, okay, Daniel has several properties. He receives a call from a prospective buyer who's interested and he wants to schedule a showing what should he do schedule a showing what do you mean oh okay he needs to disclose his agency relationship that he is the, he's representing the seller, okay. Um, what you one of Gary's statements to a client crosses the line? Probably this one right here. All right, joint tenant, so that's what I advise. All right, while working with a buyer client, Jeffrey fills in the blanks on the purchase agreement. He encouraged her to hire an attorney to review the contract and addendum and invoiced her for a nominal $15 fee to prepare the documents, which of the following and tasks to Jeffrey 
was Jeffrey legally permitted to do? Fill in the contract blanks. All right, Bethany is an age is J Jason's agent, and Jason made an offer on a property and wrote the earnest money check he gave to Bethany. What should, what should Bethany do with the check? Follow the brokerage procedures for handling money. All right, we got a hundred percent. What a great way to get near the end, right? All right, I'm gonna go kind of slow. If anybody wants to take pictures for screenshots, for test reviewing, for studying. This is kind of a review because we've already had other videos on this, but you know if they keep if they keep repeating a lot of the same stuff, that is probably pretty important. You're probably going to have a lot of questions on the test like this um, because they're trying to keep you out of jail. So this is the kind of stuff that you need to make sure you understand and abide by. More than 45 days, 30 days, and 6 days, and memorizing calculations. You know, we want to keep you out of jail. We want you to follow the law. And that is the main thing. Because it looks like the next section is going to be a lot of the same thing. So um, they're just repeating a lot of the same stuff again. They just want to make sure you get it um, so you stay out of trouble. The next one's misrepresentation and good faith. So you can tell this is pretty important to um, do, becoming a real estate salesperson. Okay, I appreciate everybody for watching, who's ever watching. Thank you.